In today's video, we're going to talk about Kitty's latest printer, the Q1 Pro. We're going to discuss some things that we like about it and some things that we think they could improve upon. So assembly, I think this thing was super easy to put together, very beginner friendly. You take it out of the box, you cut some zip ties, pretty much all you have to assemble is put this little arm on over here. And I think I had it calibrated and printing a Benchy in less than an hour and 15 minutes. I do have a full unboxing video if those kind of videos are your thing. This one's going to be more in depth now that I've got about 200 hours into it. I know it's not a ton, but I got to get these videos out before a million other people make these videos. The only thing I wish Kitty would improve on was the walkthrough on how to get it going. It wasn't hard, but it's just a little more straightforward and easy to follow with like the Creality and the Bamboo. So that's something I wish they'd improve on. For a person that's never owned a 3D printer before, you want it as easy and as streamlined as possible. So as far as the aesthetics of the machine, um, I think it kind of looks like a toaster oven. They all kind of look like household appliances. I think that might be what they're going for, but I don't love it. Five out of 10 on the looks. Um, I prefer the Creality or the Bamboo over that, but as long as it prints well, that's what we want. And moving on to the door, it's like they started to design a handle, but then stop short of putting an indent in there so it's easy to open. You can obviously still open it, but it leaves a little bit to be desired for the design. And then moving on to the side, you have the spool holder, which is pretty flimsy. There's nothing holding it out to the front, not that it's going to go anywhere, but the design leaves a lot to be desired. Um, it is better than the last machine that has this like Tupperware container that connected to the back, so they have improved it a little bit, but there's still more they could do with it. Now, finally, moving on to the back, where they have the power. Assuming you're going to have this on a wall, this is kind of an annoying place to put it. You're not going to be able to just slip your hand in there and turn it on and off. I don't know why they wouldn't put it on the side or on the front. It's just another little thing that I think they could have done better. The frame of this is metal, but everything else is plastic. And as you can see here, the tube is still rubbing up against this plastic piece, which it's just going to get worse and more dirty and scratched up. Um, not a big deal, but they could make this a little bit taller to improve that. And here's the display. I think the touch works just fine. Um, I do prefer the bamboo and like the Creality style screen, but no real complaints on the display. And then my biggest nitpick with this printer is the sheet. The sheet is great. Everything sticks to it just fine, comes off easy, but you can't just come in here and drop it down perfect. It takes a few tries. That one landed good. Put it like I kind of go from a side and drop it like that, and it's fine. But if you have it up raised on this ledge here, you can actually end up messing up your bed. I have a little scratch here. Didn't affect the plate, but it's just one of those things where it could have been such an easy fix. With the X Max 3, there's two points in each corner, and you can pretty much take this thing, drop it in there without thinking, and it lines up perfect every time. And this is new to the Kitty printers. We have a poop chute back here, along with this little wiper job here. Uh, initially, I was super excited about it, but it's okay. My initial excitement with the poop bucket was that we'd have multi-material printing coming soon, but that hasn't been confirmed by Kitty, so it's at least gonna be a while. The arm here doesn't have a motor, it just pushes on here like that, and it just feels a little flimsy, but it does its job. Also, the order of operations with it's a little bit backwards. I'll explain what I mean by that later. And also when you change the filament, it purges to get rid of that excess filament between swaps and it just purges it onto the bed. It should default back to that chute where it'll purge into that bucket. It's just, I feel like they could fix that with an update, but it's just an observation. I don't hate it. I think it does its job just fine. And I think it's one step closer to these printers getting multi-material printing. So this does have a tri-metal hot end, I believe they call it. So you can print abrasive materials like glitter filaments. This is carbon fiber PLA and it printed it beautifully. I'll show you a close up of all this in a minute. So let's take this hot end out and show you how easy it is to swap it. So the removal is pretty straightforward. This cover is magnetic and pops off easily. You take off the little silicone jobber and just unscrew it. And then when you're done, you just screw it back in. Quite simple and straightforward. And then if you wanna remove the entire hot end and not just the nozzle, it's just two screws, and then you just kinda of give it a little tug and wiggle, and it slides right out. And then there's some wires on the back side that you'd have to unclip, but overall, it's pretty easy. Oh, here we go, it's already out. So this thing never stays in there. I don't know if it's just me or the one I have, but this thing just, you 
barely bump it and it just pops out. So I could probably 3D print something to like fix that up, but it's just annoying. So let's load some filament and show you how it loads and unloads, and then we'll print your first layer to show you how that looks. So swapping the filament's a little bit different. You just go to unload, and then you have to push down on this little connector, pull it up, and just snip the filament. Then I would just replace the filament, feed it through the tube, preheat the nozzle, and just manually extrude it with the extrude button. But also if you just go to load, it'll run you through this itself, so we'll just do it that way. Heating up. I've been running this with the uh, Sunlu dry box, not this. But for the sake of the video, we'll do it this way. Okay, you push it through until you can see it. So we'll just set this to 220. I like to run a little bit extra out of there just to make sure it's actually in there. All right, so let's go in here and do the first layer test once this is first layer. Make sure the build plate is good. Send it. So now it's going to run through this little purging pass here. You can see it just purged into the bucket. Has a little roller like the bamboo. Then it's going to rub on this little felt pad. Okay, now it's going to run through its startup sequence. Okay, now as this thing heats up and it went through its sequence, I'll usually get a little bit of schmutz oozing out of there, so it should go back and do one more little thing, but it doesn't. But usually it clears it up anyways with the little purge lines it does. So not a big deal, but there we go. See it? So it does that. So it should just do one more quick wipe, but it does these little purge lines. So and also what I love about this is you can do some manual adjustments here. We have a knob here, a knob here, and a knob back there. I did make micro adjustments when I did set up the printer, but it was pretty cl close out the box. So while this is doing the first layer, let's take a look at all these prints I've done over the course of the past couple weeks. So I have a variety of filaments here. We have uh, two different types of silks. I have just general PLAs. I have TPU, and then I have some ASA, and this is carbon fiber. PLA printed this beautifully. This is a thumper from Dune. Then this does come apart. Everything's threaded. Threads together beautifully. This is just high speed PLA from Sunlu. Printed this Deadpool beautifully. There's a little bit of blowouts. I printed this no supports. Some little bit of blowouts on the back here, but if you slow down them overhangs, I think that would clear that up. But overall, he looks great. The old Ninja Turtle here. This is PLA Plus. It prints the PLA Plus beautifully. Again, no supports. Look how beautiful those overhangs are. Beautiful first layer. All those details. Then we have PLA Plus in pink, Wonder Woman, beautiful print. You can get these all on printables, these are not my files. Then we have some silk PLA here. These are all pretty much stock Orca profiles. I run this with Orca and no problems. I make minor tweaks after I, you know, print them a few times, but this is Silk, Dragon Egg, Sun Lu, that rainbow silk from Sun Lu. This is ASA. I tried to print this with no supports, made a little bit of blow out there. So I ended up printing this one with supports, but this ASA is beautiful with that heated chamber. Look at that. And then this is one of those basketballs. This is TPU 95. Took two days to print this, printed it beautifully. And then we have a thing hand. Again, off of printables, this is PLA. JS Studios made that. But beautiful. All these prints are, again, stock profiles for the most part and just beautiful prints. Supports come off super easy. This is a birdhouse. A few other things to mention about this printer it does have 
a runout sensor, which I've had no problems with. It does have a tangle sensor, which I did actually end up using in my unboxing video when they gave you that little pigtail of filament. It actually got snagged and it did work. The early bird pricing for this machine is $470. Um, they actually are extending that. We don't know for how long, but I think that's a great price point for this machine. Keeping it under $500, it's a really good machine for that. Once you get up past $550, $600, then you're starting to compete with some of the other machines. And I just think that this is best kept under $550. We have an aff affiliate link in the description below if you want to support the channel. And for print speeds, this thing prints just as fast as all the other top printers right now. 600 millimeters a second and 20K acceleration, I believe. So plenty fast enough. So this printer does run off Clipper. Uh, there was a few complaints about that from other people in the 3D printing space. And the complaints were that the Clipper is outdated and it's a couple years old, which it is. But for the average user, I don't think that's going to matter. For me, I don't mess with anything inside of Clipper besides sending files to the printer along with checking the camera when I'm not around it. So that's not something that bothers me, but if you're someone that likes to tinker, it's something worth mentioning. An amazing feature this printer has is a heated chamber. It just makes it that much easier to print ASA, ABS, and other hard to print filaments. Especially for under $500 to have a heated chamber, I just think that's awesome. All right, the first layer is done. Um, I haven't cleaned this print plate in quite a while. So if there's any schmutz, that's probably why, but the first layer, my initial view looks beautiful. All right, we'll let this cool down a little bit, but she is looking good. Okay, so there's a mark there, but that's probably for my greasy thumb. There's also a spot back there, but overall that is a beautiful first layer. I did a micro adjustment when I set it up and I haven't touched it since. All right, there we go. No complaints on that. So Kitty does have a mobile app, but when you go to download it, it's not in English. But you can change it to English. I messaged Kitty and they said they're going to tell their engineer team to fix that. So if you use their app, you can actually navigate through it. I don't really have a review on the app as I haven't actually used it yet. I just actually downloaded it yesterday. So the belts on this machine feel a little loose. It has an auto tensioning system. So ease of use, it's probably the easiest system out there. You kind of just loosen these screws back in here and then move it in like a figure eight pattern and it auto tensions them. Um, I wish it just had more of a traditional system or kind of an override where I could just add a little bit more tension. But overall it's, it prints well so it's hard to complain. So overall I think this is a great printer. The setup was easy, it was easy to use. I think it'd be a great printer for a beginner. Also I think it'd be a great printer for that little more advanced user that's looking to get into harder to print filaments that require a heated chamber or just an enclosure like ASA and ABS. But overall I think this thing's an absolute steal for under $500. If you're interested in this printer we have affiliate links in the description if you want to support the channel that way. We also have a Patreon but either way if you don't use our links I would just act on that price sooner than later before that price goes up. Um, I feel like we were a little hard on this printer in the video, but Kitty needs to hear the feedback. And also I need to point out some downsides of this printer as it just can't all be upsides. Um, I think the nitpicks are relatively minor, a little annoying, but also I think some of them could just be fixed with the basic update. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of this printer down in the comments.